Hey guys, those are Vacations, and welcome to my review of VHS 2. No, this isn't a rant. Surprise, surprise. I totally expected this to be a rant. I, I avoided watching this sequel for years. Like, I've avoided it for like about a year, not really years, because it came out last year. But I avoided watching it because I hated the first film so much. You already know my opinion is on that. I did two different rant videos on that movie. And, um, so I, I avoided the second one like, a, like the plague until the third one came out this year. And I'm doing horror anthology, so I thought, why not check out the second film? And so I checked out the second movie, and I came away very pleasantly surprised by it. Um, at least, at least, the, at least two out of the three stories. There's only three stories here, which helps. It's not five like the first VHS. It's not over long. Uh, I don't think the movie really overstays its welcome. It's only 92 minutes long instead of pretty much almost two hours. And I thought there were a couple stories that I thought were really well done and uh, genuinely creepy and actually a lot of fun. Uh, especially the, the alien uh, abduction story at the end. I thought it was a nice, fun story. Had some fun lines of dialogue, some fun characters. And, and oh my god, they were likable! Holy shit! What a revelation! Um, and the second story I really loved. I thought it had a nice, dark sense of humor to it that was really nice to see. And I'm a big fan of black humor anyway, so it was nice to see that in that story. And it was also directed by uh, a director who did, did The Raid. Um, who directed The Raid Redemption. Um, yeah, Safe Haven, which was uh, directed by... He was one of the directors. Uh, Timo Tot, TJ Hanto, and Gareth Evans. So that, that was pretty cool to see Gareth Evans, you know, a director of horror anthology segment. Um, but anyway... <clears throat> Not all of it's good. The first segment I thought was generic and lame and shitty, but I'll, but I'll get to that soon enough. And, but even the wraparound I liked in this. I thought it genuinely kept my interest. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was kind of, it actually kind of started to build sort of a backstory for why people put these stories on VHS. Uh, so maybe they get some sort of power to, um, you know, uh, live past death type thing, like they do these VHS, if they record themselves dying, they could somehow still survive uh, past, you know, the moment that they are deceased, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a little bit, you know, I thought it was a little bit of, definitely a huge step up, a huge step up from the set, from the first film. Really surprised by the overall quality of the movie. And even more so when, you, when I found out that it was rushed into production. It was rushed into production, this is right off the bat, it was rushed into production um, literally in late 2012 after the, fir after the first film came out. And it was briefly released in theaters. It was released in 2013 as part of the Sundance Film Festival, but it didn't do very much in the theater. I think it should have gotten a wider release because I think it might have done a little bit better. I don't know. I, I, th I think word of mouth might have helped it. Um, there was a lot, there would be a lot worse horror films to see in the theater than this. It's kind of like ABC's Adept 2. I mean, that's another, it's another sequel that's, that's, uh, considerably better than the first film. I'd probably even say I like this more than the first ABC's Adept. Um, this is definitely a sequel. If I found it for cheap somewhere, I'd pick it up. I would, I would definitely wouldn't mind adding this to my collection, even though I don't care for the first story. But um, I still wouldn't mind adding it to my collection because there's anthologies that I have in my collection that I don't really care for some of the stories in them either. Like Twilight Zone the movie. I don't care for the first story in that, so, uh, but I still have it on DVD. Uh, but, you know, so, you know, that, that's, that's kind of how it is with some of these anthology movies. But anyway, um, it got a 70% on Rotten Tomatoes, so the majority of them liked it. Um, but Rex Reed... He was a subject of controversy because he gave, he gave a scathing review of the film in which he admitted that he walked out at the end of the first segment. His review does complain about parts of the film that happened after he left the film, but his references are imprecise. Describing a Sikh segment slumber party alien abduction as a sleepover invaded by psycho kidnappers as opposed to aliens told from the perspective of a, of a GoPro camera attached to the back of a dog, or summarizing the segment of Ride in the Park as a tale of a mountain piker pursued by flesh-eating zombies rather than turned into one himself early on. Rex Reed, you suck. You didn't watch the whole movie. How were you even allowed to even write a review? 
I'm serious. He's a professional movie reviewer. How the fuck was he even allowed to write a review? I mean, you have to fucking finish it, except for maybe Iceman, the Donnie Yen movie that my friend Matt just decided I'm not watching it because I don't want to see Donnie Yen taking, leaving pisses and taking a shit and taking shits. I can totally understand why you don't want to see Donnie Yen leaving pisses and, and taking shits. So I can totally see why he didn't finish the whole thing. At least he went back later and looked at what, and how it actually ended. Rex Reed didn't even bother with that and fucking wrote an article. Wrote a review. This guy should have been fired. I would have fired him on the spot. That's unprofessional. And that's bullshit. You're getting paid to review movies, dude. And Rex Reed has been... Re he's reviewed movies for a long ass time. I think he was around in the 80s and the 90s reviewing stuff. So you should know better already. I mean, even Cisco and Ebert, they sat through shitty movies like North. They sat through the whole thing. They didn't leave and, and for, after it just started and then write a, re a scathing review about it. That's like if you're a food critic and you go to a restaurant and you order some food and you don't even eat the food and you still give it, you have like one bite and the, out of all of these dishes and you say and you say, and you give it the restaurant a scathing review because you just are I don't know you got to stick up your ass and you just feel like you just need to write a negative review before some goddamn reason of a movie that you didn't even finish watching it's not an example of the ice man with Donnie Yen where he's fucking plastic bags make trucks flip over and Donnie Yen's got a petrified penis and shit. That's a completely different story. I can totally understand why people would not want to sit down and watch the rest of that shit. But at least see what how it ends and actually do some research instead of walking out of a goddamn movie and giving it shit when you didn't even fucking watch the rest of it, so then you look like an unprofessional fucking hack because you didn't research and you make shit up. Then it gets published. What the fuck? I'm more pissed off. I'm more pissed off at that than I am about that, this fucking movie. But anyway, um, I just thought I'd mention that a little bit because I was like, "What the hell?" Anyway, so there's only three stories here. There's not five. That helps. Um, it was originally going to be called SVHS, and I'm glad they called it VHS two because SVHS is just I, I just no, I don't like that title. It's just I don't even know what an SVHS is, and you're talking to the guy who collects VHS tapes. So you have the wraparound segment, which is just called Tape 49, and um, it stars Lawrence Michael Levine as Larry, Kelsey Abbott as Aisha, I didn't mind her character, uh, Elsie Holt as Kyle, uh, Simon Barrett as Steve, and Mindy Robinson as Tabitha. And yes, I did find the fucking names of the people this time around, because I didn't feel like him, I was fucking... <laughs> ranting on the first film because I didn't really want to talk about him. But um, anyway, I did. I decided to, you know, do look them up for that. But anyway, Tape 49 deals with uh, the, these, uh, you know, sort of PIs, these personal investigators. They're investigating um, Larry Botch's investigation uh, you know, where a college student's mother requests that Larry and his girlfriend Aisha, also a private investigator, investigate the disappearance of her son. Uh, they break into the student's dorm, and they're there they discover a large stack of VHS tapes and a laptop, which is still recording video. On the laptop, the student discusses the VHS tapes, saying where he got one of the most recent ones, and Larry tells Aisha to watch the tapes while he investigates the house. As Aisha watches the first tape, a figure peers out and watches her. And that's just a part one of the um, wraparound. As it continues, Aisha keeps watching more of these uh, tapes, more of these things on the laptop and she starts getting side effects like her nose starts bleeding and you know kind of you know sort of stuff she kind of sees stuff and then as it goes on she keeps getting worse her condition gets worse and worse um yeah i mean after you know she calls larry into the room they discuss the tapes legitimacy that's in part two of the 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 tape 49 larry tells that you should continue viewing the tapes that the student's video explains must be watched in the proper order to affect you um, part three of the tape 49 narrative, Larry and re enters the room and finds Aisha asleep with her nose bleeding. After being woken, she says she has a migraine. Larry leaves to find some medicine and is seemingly entranced Aisha watches another tape. From the shadows, a figure crawls out and watches her. And then you have part four, the apple, you know, part four, which 
it, no, the the whole the the wraparound segment does not end before the end of the movie, which is good. And upon Larry's return, he discovers Aisha lying deceased. She died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to her temple. A VHS tape with the word "watch" is written on it in lipstick. Lies beside her. Larry picks up the tape and anxiously watches it. And then part five, you find out that what happened to the student that Larry watches the webcam footage. And this is that blog, and, and he sees the student explain that he and his mother want to make their own tape. The student then attempts suicide on camera by shooting himself on the jaw, but he seemingly survives, even though his jaw was completely ripped off. Good makeup effect here. And then he runs off moments before Larry and Aisha enter the dorm. An undead Aisha suddenly attacks Larry. When he breaks her neck, she chases after him on all fours. That was a pretty nice tense sequence. Larry then hides in a closet and shoots Aisha in the face when she finds him. And then Larry hears a gurgling sound and explores the closet, only to find the student hiding in the back. The student strangles Larry and afterwards gives the camera a thumbs up, and then the recording ends. And I didn't mind the wraparound story. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was, you know, these PIs are trying to investigate what happened to this kid. And then they find these tapes, and it made more sense. It was like, hey, let's actually give a reason to why these, you know, movies, these, you know, videotapes, these things are on VHS. It's sort of a way to give people a rush or... Like I said, you have to watch them in order in order for them to affect you physically. So maybe it's like sort of like a drug. It gives you a sort of feeling that you wouldn't get any other way. And gives you a chance to play God and possibly survive life after death. So it's kind of an interesting sort of thing. Like you film yourself dying, then maybe you somehow are able to survive. So not explained super well, but it was ambiguous enough. It was ambiguous, but it was it worked. It was ambiguous, but it was the type of ambiguousness that worked because it allowed you to come up with your own conclusions because it was still ambiguous enough that it kind of, there was some way that you could kind of put two and two together. Unlike some of the stories in the first VHS film where you couldn't really put two and two together because you're just fucking confused or there's really not enough there for you to put anything together. But anyway, that's the wraparound. Uh, it was directed by Simon Barrett. And, uh, and then you have the second, the first story, which is directed by Adam Wingard who directed the wraparound segment of the first VHS, and this is the weakest segment. Uh, it's called Clinical Trials, and it stars Adam Wingard as Herman, so I guess he plays the, the main guy, the main character. Okay, his acting wasn't really that bad, so I can't really say it's super horrible. Um, and Hannah Hughes is Clarissa, who I thought was hot, and she was the most memorable part of the segment. She's a hot you know, punk chick, and she shows her tits in a couple scenes. She's got a nice rack. And that's the most memorable thing about this segment. I'm just like, hot punk chick. And she's got a nice rack. And that's all I fucking remember. Because the rest of the segment was generic as fuck. And too bad, really. Because the idea about it, the idea of the, of the segment I liked. Um, you also have Corinne Lynn Fitzpatrick, who plays a young girl. Brian Udovich just plays a, a, a guy named the Bloody Man. And then John Karras plays an uncle. Casey J. Adams plays a character named Justin. And pretty much what happens is, after a car accident, a man receives an ocular implant that causes paranormal experiences. A camera embedded in the implant records his distress as ghosts haunt him. A fellow patient reveals that she, a fellow patient Clarissa, uh, played by uh, Hannah Hughes, reveals that she has experienced the same problem that ghosts become stronger when no one pays attention to them. Pretty much what she does is she, she can hear the ghosts. He can see them. Uh, but she can hear them because she had like a, 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 a audio implant thing in her ear. Now to help her, you know, be able to hear because she used to be deaf. So when the ghost drown, then the ghost drown her in a rather lame scene. The man then uses a razor to remove his implant and out of his eye. And undeterred, the ghost stuffed the eye, still attached to the razor, down his throat, presumably killing him. And yeah, that's 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 all. That's all it is. It's not much of anything. It's not very scary. It's very generic. It gets really boring after a while. Um, I, I kept myself wondering, like, how the fuck did this guy afford this mansion, like, this house on the side of, like, just a beautiful property? And you're looking at this guy, and you're like, this guy just, there's no way this guy afforded this, like, afforded this uh, mansion on a waterfront somewhere, like, in at California. Are you kidding me? Really? This, this is a fucking mansion, man. This guy can't afford this. So I'm, I'm more, I'm more... I'm distracted by how expensive, it, you know, the place he's living in looks in this segment versus actually being any kinds of scared. Um, because all he does is see generic ghost girls and generic ghosts and stuff that was done better in the Sentinel in the 70s. 
It was it was just really just not really anything. There was nothing memorable. The kill at the end wasn't much of anything. The one character I liked, she gets drowned in the in the in the in the pool. I liked her. I liked Hannah. You know the character that Hannah played, um, Clarissa. Uh, but you know she dies, and then I'm just like, okay, great. I don't have that, you know, pretty face to look at anymore. So, wonderful. So, you're left with Adam Wingard, who isn't the worst actor in the world. But, you know, he just he doesn't have much to do. The screenplay isn't much of anything. It's, it's just generic. I mean, that's the word that comes to mind when I think of this segment. Which is, it's just generic. Which was written by Simon Barrett. And it's just generic, been there, done that. And the only good thing about it is the eye. The, the whole thing where he's got an eye implant that, you know, lets him see dead people or ghosts or whatever. But they didn't do much with it. It's not very scary. It's just the typical shit you've seen a million times in a million other ghost movies. It was just nothing. It wasn't much of anything. It was it was definitely the weakest segment out of, out of the three. And that's really too bad. I honestly, you know, I, I agree with my friend Matt when he talks about VHS Viral, um, the segment Bone Storm. I'd love to make a cut of this movie where I just cut out this first segment, Clinical Trials, and put in uh, Bone Storm from VHS Viral because that would make a better film. Because as it is, the uh, Clinical Trials is just boring. It's boring. It's 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 uh, and it's generic. And I know I sound like a broken record, but that's that's those are the words that come to mind when I think about the segment. <clears throat> it's not very engaging, and it's not very original. And the only thing that's unique about it is the whole eye implant thing. And they just don't do much with it. Would no, don't do much with the eye implant uh, storyline. Doesn't really make it that memorable. And it just and as a result, it's just it's not much fun to watch. And it's just it's not even it, it's just. It's a waste. It's a wasted opportunity. It's, it's kind of disappointing, actually. Anyway, uh, so that's uh, Clinical Trials. Uh, the second segment I really enjoyed. I, I thought it had a nice wry sense of humor about it. And it also was really, really an interesting idea. It's called A Ride in the Park. It's directed by Eduardo Sanchez and Greg Hill. And it stars Jay Sanders as, the, as a biker. Uh, Petty Castle as a screaming girl. Dave Cohn as a good Samaritan guy. Wendy Donegan as a good Samaritan girl. And Devin Brookshire as, as a biker's girlfriend. And pretty much what happens is there's a cyclist who is played by Jay Sanders. And he has a GoPro camera fixed on his helmet. And he runs into a hysterical and bloody woman. And when he attempts to help her, she viciously bites him. And he flees several approaching zombies. A pair of bikers attempt to help him after he passes out, supposedly dead. But then he attacks and partially devours them. And then what happens is, I, I really like, I, I enjoy this sort of thing where uh, the, 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 the wife, one of the wife bikers, she starts, she becomes a zombie, and then she starts eating her husband's guts, and then the husband wakes up, and then and just, you know, the husband's like, huh? Huh? And the wife's like, oh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so I, I thought that there was some like kind of nice little time, funny sort of moments in this. And it was totally, I think it was totally definitely meant to be that. It was supposed to be make you laugh, this segment. And so, and I like the idea of a point of view, a POV of a man, of a guy turning into a zombie. I thought that was unique and interesting. I kind of did that with a segment in ABC's of Death as well. But it was a pretty unique sort of uh, interesting segment. I, I, I like that. So anyway, what happens is they end up, so, you know, he, the, the, the three zombies now, the biker, the bicyclist, and his wife, and, and, the, and, our, and our cyclist guy, our lead guy, he ends up, they end up shuffling towards a birthday party. And then they get, this all havoc breaks loose. They start attacking people, the birthday party, the kids, well, the, the, the main zombie, our, our lead, the GoPro camera is getting his ass kicked by a guy with a baseball bat. And, you know, and uh, eventually the segment, it kind of it ends, I thought, I like the way that it ended where it showed a little bit of humanity. It showed a little bit of the humanity that was still left in uh, this character, in, in the cyclist, where, you know, he sees a teddy bear on the ground. And this is after all, all this craziness has happened. People have gotten, you know, some people have escaped away from the party and their SUVs away from the zombies, ran over some zombies, and... Um, he, the, uh, the cyclist guy, he sees a teddy bear that's on the ground, and he picks it up. And I thought the performance by the actor was pretty well done. 
You know, he just looks at the teddy bear. Like, uh, 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 uh. They've got to show a little bit of, there's a little bit of humanity that's still left there, even though he's a zombie. And then he, he his phone starts ringing and it's his girlfriend. And she's like, you butt dialed me, honey. What's wrong? You know, and I, and I really, I miss you. And, you know, he's like, uh, uh, uh. And it was kind of really tragic, actually. And I, and, and I think I think the zombie starts to cry a little bit. And then the zombie find then our lead zombie finds a shotgun and the segment ends with him taking his own life, which is, you know, he's already dead, but it's, he wanted to finish the job so he doesn't hurt anybody else. And he does that while his wife, while his girlfriend is still on the line, I think, on the phone. So it was pretty tragic. Um, but at the same time, it was fun because it was unique. It was different. It did more with this with the concept than uh, the first segment did. Um, I thought this did a good job with the concept. It was, it had a nice wry sense of humor. It was funny, um, good, good makeup effects. Uh, just a fun ride. It was, and, and it was tragic at the end, but it, but it was an ending that the, the, the segment deserved. It earned it. And yeah, I like, I like the segment. I, I thought it was a, a nice change, fresh, you know, fresh, fresh change of pace. It was unique. The whole idea of a POV, a person turning into a zombie. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I like that. I like to ride in the park. Actually, there's four segments. I'm sorry, I'm I made a, I made a mistake. There's, is there? Yeah, there's there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. I, I said there's three, that there's four. My bad. Three out of the four segments I like. But whatever, you know, I made a mistake. What? At least I corrected myself. Now, whatever. <laughs> sorry. Uh, but anyway, uh, the third segment, I'd probably say is my favorite segment. It's safe, It's a segment called Safe Haven. It's directed by Timo Tahajanto and Gareth Evans. And um, it stars Fakri Albar as Adam, Hannah El Rashid as Lena, uh, Oka Antara as Malik, Andrew Suleiman as Joni, Ibi Kasundar as, as father, and R.R. Pinturi as Ibu Suri. And it's definitely it's got like Indonesian actors and 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 uh, and, uh, and the like, and the plot deals with a news crew that infiltrates an Indonesian cult, and inside the cult leader announces that the time of reckoning has come, and the cultists begin a mass suicide, and then a pregnant member of the crew is taken to a birthing room, and then crazy fucking shit happens. A fucking large demon and great practical effects rips out of her body, and and ultimately killing her. It chases the last crew into his car, and then the former cultists rise like zombie-like, you know, ghouls. And then the demon overturns the car, and as it approaches the man, calls the man Papa. And then the man laughs hysterically, realizing the demon is actually he's actually his own son. And then it starts the apocalypse. I, I didn't mind the ending. I thought it was pretty pretty clever. It starts out with you know the demon thing, good practical effect too. Papa, and then he's like, ha, 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 
I don't want to, I don't want to give it all away. Like I said, there's just a lot of mass suicides. Uh, um, some guy explodes, a demon rips out of some chick's chest, uh, you know, in good practical effects, it rips right through her stomach. You know, horns just poke right through. It is it's just a really it's it's a really crazy ass fucking segment. I love it though. I really do love it. It's unique, it's original, it's got a little bit of a dark sense of humor, but not a lot, but a little bit a little bit of that uh black humor flavor to it. And just great practical effects, bloody as hell. If you're a gore hound, you're gonna like this segment. There's a lot of blood, there's gallons of it. And uh yeah, I just thought the idea of it was creepy. You know, a cult. Cult's creepy enough as it is. And then dealing with the demon baby and all this kind of stuff. It it sounds stupid, but trust me, it works. It works well. Because the, the, with the demon baby thing, at least they don't take it that seriously. But the other stuff, it's pretty harrowing. It's pretty intense. You know, the whole scene where the guy's trying to get away, get out of the fucking uh, cult. Uh, get out of the... Um, I'm trying to remember, like, what what is this place they live in? Like, the, the facility, trying to get out of the facility with all the cult members after they killed themselves and they're just mass killing themselves left and right. I thought it was actually pretty suspenseful. It felt like, and thrilling, kind of the climax of the segment felt like I was, uh, it was like POV too, so it felt like I was um, uh, playing, like, a first-person horror video game and I'm on the last level and I'm trying to get the fuck out of there uh, before shit you know, hits the fan. It was a really, you know, really, uh, uh, really engaging, thrilling, exciting, uh, fun segment. I, I really didn't really, I really enjoyed this segment. There's a lot of moments that make you go, holy shit, you know, some great effects. Yeah, definitely, definitely a great segment. Um, then you had the fourth segment, Slumber Party, Alien Abduction, which I thought had some moments too. That's the one that had some fun lines of dialogue, the dialogue directed by Jason Eisner. Um, this is, it stars Riley Eisner as Tank, Rylan, Rylan Logan as Gary, Samantha Gracie as Jen, Cohen King as Randy, Zach Ford as Sean, Josh Ingram, Ingram as Danny, Jeremy Saunders as Zach, and Hannah Prozenko as Melissa. And what happens is you have a bunch of teenagers and kids, uh, they, they live at a lakeside house and they attach a camera to their dog to create videos, which is another sort of unique sort of way to, to record video on a dog. I thought it was kind of different. And after their parents leave, the kids invite over other friends, and the younger brothers that harass their sister and her boyfriend. Uh, they put fireworks. I, I, they don't. I don't know if they put fireworks in their bedroom, but they do all kinds of crazy shit. They just, just, they just interrupt her while she's trying to make love with her boyfriend. They end up getting one of the kids back though, as they catch him while he's watching porn on the TV, jacking it, jacking off, and they catch him. And they're like, we'll, we'll post this on YouTube. Ah, we got you. It's like, no, hey, come on, please. My life will be ruined. Uh, and um, But what happens is, unknown to them all, great aliens have landed. And uh, there's a pretty creepy, tense scene where they've landed already. And there's an alien under the water when they're playing around under the water. And there's literally an alien under the water that they have no idea is there that tries to snatch one of them, but they get out of the water just in time before anything happens. But then eventually, the aliens begin to abduct some of the kids. They frighten them with bright lights and deafening noises. And it's definitely disorientating. I think the film did a really good job. The segment did a really good job of disorientating the audience with these really bright lights and this really loud horn noise. And pretty disorientating. And these aliens didn't mess around. These, weren't the, these aliens were not, they did not come in peace. They were more like extra aliens or, or kind of, or like the aliens from Fire in the Sky. They did not come in peace. They came to abduct your ass, and that's it. So anyway, they start abducting these kids one by one. And then the remaining kids who survived, they head toward to believe what they are police lights and sirens. But it turns out to be a trap. It's actually the aliens in their spaceship, and they're smart, and they, they trick them. The brother and the sister escape to a barn where they're, with their dog where they tend to hide. Ultimately, though, both siblings are abducted, with a boy dropping the, go dropping the dog, and who falls to his death. The recording then ends with a shot of the dying dog. Yeah, the dog dies. Poor pooch. But still, I, I mean, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, everybody pretty much gets screwed. The aliens, literally, it probably, they will all get screwed by the aliens. At the end, probably. They get abducted, and they're going to get screwed. They're going to get probed, and that's, that's, that's it. That's, that's, that's exactly what's going to happen. But, I mean, I like the segment because I like the characters. So I cared about what happened when the aliens started abducting them. 
And I thought the way that the that the segment handled the alien abduction scenes was well done. It was disorientating and creepy. I thought the aliens themselves are pretty creepy looking. They're not the typical looking gray aliens. They had like these really shadowy looking black eyes and mouths. And um, the way they shot them I thought was pretty well done. I mean, they might have been CGI. If they were, they did a good job covering that up. And it was, I thought it was really tense and a little bit creepy and, and, and definitely uh, put you on edge. But I have to admit, the way it ended, you know, nobody survived, so that kind of sucked. But at the same time, I can't really get, I'm not going to get too mad at that. Because, the, I mean, the last segment I really liked, I mean, it's pretty much a cult segment. It's pretty much everybody's fuck because it's the apocalypse. So, uh, so um, I can't really, you know, say that this was really, was really didn't really work because everybody died at the end. But um, I enjoyed this segment, too. Um, I would say I wouldn't, didn't like it as much as the segment before it. But I'd say I liked it as much as the zombie segment, uh, the, the POV zombie segment. So anyway, yeah, um, uh, that's that's uh, Slumber Party Alien Abduction, and uh, which uh, that was had its definitely had its moments. And of course, the wraparound story I already already mentioned that it ends after that, and I didn't mind the wraparound story either. Uh, the one thing I did I didn't really. I didn't really care this because this, there's a sad there's a song that plays actually I didn't mind the song at the end of the end of end credits of this movie I think no is this the one that had that really lame song or something there's there's one there's one of these movies that I hated the song at the end of the first one I think the music was okay here I I think it's a VHS viral it has like music that's totally inappropriate but anyway um maybe it is this one that has the fucking techno music at the end I don't think so though. I, that's VHS viral that has that. Um, but anyway, um, I didn't mind VHS 2. At the end of the day, I, I liked it. I would say I liked VHS 2. I thought it was an above average horror anthology. It could have been even more than that for me if the fourth story, if the, if the first story, not the fourth, I like the fourth story, if the first story was actually good and not generic and boring and just much, much ado about nothing. Um, then I would give it a higher rating, but as it is, I, I'd probably give it three and a half out of five stars. Um, I know, I know, you know, hey, why don't you give it a little bit higher? Three out of four, that's a good, that's a good, a good, uh, good combo. It's like, I didn't mind the alien abduction story, but then, you know, I didn't, I didn't mind the zombie thing, but there's only like one really, really good one, and I would probably say, there's two really, really good ones, the zombie one and the, um, and the cult one. The England abduction one I can I can I can watch, but at the same time it's not something I would probably say is great. But it's 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 definitely watchable and probably a time waster for me. So there's only two really great stories and one that's like eh, uh, and then one that isn't very good. So that's that's kind of why I, I I gave it three and a half out of five stars. I I couldn't really give find myself giving it uh giving it four, but um if it had a better story first story I probably would. I still, I still really, at the end of the day, I liked VHS 2. And um, it's a big improvement. I know I didn't rate the first film, but I was gonna, if I was going to rate it, it would get one star. So if it, it, and that's just for the, that's kind of probably being kind, but if one star is way too wide. If I was going to rate the first one, I'd give it a half a star, just for like a few scenes in the last segment. Um... But he, the October 31st segment, like uh, the night, the 1998 Halloween 1998 segment, uh, with the haunted house thing, um, half a star. So if you were curious about what my rating would be for the first film, if I actually rated it, it would be half a star. Um, this one, like three and a half, it's a huge improvement. And um, yeah, so, but sadly to say, VHS viral is just. It's more of the same, like the first film, and it's a step down. So stay tuned for that review, because you know I I I was pretty disappointed by that. Um, I really liked I I wouldn't say I really liked this, but I I liked it, and I wasn't expecting to, and so kind of got my hopes up a little bit more for VHS Viral, and it, it just didn't deliver. But anyway, I really don't want to say about VHS two, except thank you for watching my review, and I will see you guys later. See ya.